God's sake, don't touch it. Dad, what's wrong with the telly? But you don't want to see that. Hey, honey, quick. It's the, it's the Jerry Springer show, and he's going to hit his girlfriend. Shut up. Watch this. Go about your business. Everything's fine. It's a mad world. Yes, it is. They want to turn us into robots, and they're doing so. And if anyone thinks that it's not possible, well, it is possible. It's been done before. They just want to do it on a mass scale. This is China today. Look at that. They are human beings. They could be free spirits. They could be all consciousness expressing itself in this reality. And look at them. Robots. And that's what they want us to be. Robots. With this acquiescence, this... Um, uh, manipulation of the, uh, in, in like the, uh, the laboratory maze I was talking about, by constantly giving us reasons to, 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 to be punished and to fear. And then, and I'm coming to an end now, but again, this is part of Big Brother. Uh, this is really part of Big Brother. The human body is an electrochemical organism, and if you destabilize it electrically or chemically, you stop that organism working to full capacity. And part of that capacity is emotional and mental sharpness and balance and equilibrium. So the more you pour chemical and electromagnetic electrical pollution and disruptions into the electrochemical organism, the more you stop that manifesting its true potential for sharp thought and balanced emotion. When you look at the graphs for the increase in uh, the crap they put into food, chemical uh, concoctions and cocktails, overwhelmingly, though certainly not always, aimed at children. And then you look at the graph of the increase in so-called um, childhood behavior problems. They go up like they are connected by a magnet. There is a war on our children because they're the generation they overwhelmingly have to suppress. Aspartame is a sugar substitute. Have a look at this if you haven't come across it. It's in virtually everything now. And aspartame is a uh, excitotoxin, they call it. It excites brain cells and destroys them. It stops the brain working efficiently. They sent letters out to um, naval pilots in, in America a few uh, years ago telling them not to drink soft drinks with aspartame in before they fly because it affects their brain's ability to think. And, and, and sharp. And who brought aspartame into existence? Donald Rumsfeld. He was head of cell pharmaceuticals. Um, they couldn't get uh, aspartame through the uh, Food and Drug Administration checks in America to become part of you know, the food that we eat and drink. And so they appointed him because he was close friends with the Reagan Bush administration. And the Reagan Bush administration changed the head of the Food and Drug Administration um, when he came in and suddenly the checks were forgotten and aspartame uh, came out. He then sold out to Monsanto, had a vast profit, and Monsanto now controls aspartame as they control GM food. Fluoride in the water is an excitotoxin. It excites brain cells, destroys them, and it suppresses thought. The first known time that fluoride was put into water supplies was in the Nazi concentration camps to keep the people docile. Genetically modified food is designed to genetically modify us. Vaccines, 25 vaccinations before the age of two with a growing, immune, still developing immune system. All the stuff they give us, electromagnetic suit, the rabbit hole is seriously deep. And this is so appropriate. This was said by a pastor after the Second World War, talking about Nazi Germany. He said, first they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the communists and I did not speak out, speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for me and by then there was no one left to speak out for me. And what they're doing is picking off different sections of society but the other sections are saying, well, it doesn't affect me, not my problem. And eventually, enough sections are picked off for those that were looking the other way to be picked off also. That's how it is. Divide and rule. Not my problem. 
Well, it is our problem. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Martin Luther King. Absolutely it is. And what we need to do is stop making excuses. Oh, I know the world's coming to. Well, do something about it then, mate. All right? You know, the power is with us. Take it on a basic level. What we need is a mass um, non-cooperation, non-violent process of non-cooperation with that which wishes to enslave us. When someone gets fined for putting a wheelie bin out, if thousands and thousands of people put the wheelie bin out the wrong day, every week, every week until the laws change, finished. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere, potentially, because next time it's going to be us. And it's a house of cards, this. It's held together. The power that is used to enslave us is the power we give to the enslavers every day. They don't have power. They have our power. We give it to them. It's time to take it back. And by that, it means unity. So we might have a different religion or no religion. So we might be a Jew or a Muslim or a Christian or it might be black or white or sky blue, bloody pink. This is not a big brother global agenda to enslave Jewish people or to enslave Islamic people or to enslave white people middle class. It's a global agenda to enslave all of us. And if we don't unite and we go on being divided and ruled, then they will enslave all of us. If we unite, get rid of the nonsense fault lines of manufactured division. And then, and then, through unity of response and non-cooperation with our own enslavement, they will not be able to do this. The key is to free our minds. We, we see the world like this. We need to see the, oh God, look at it. Free our minds. Einstein said, you cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. And that's what we do. We have a political consciousness which comes in under the Labour name or a Republican name and then they're replaced by the same political consciousness called Conservatives or Democrats. And nothing changes because the same level of consciousness that created the problem has come in to carry on creating the problems. We've got to go to another level of consciousness beyond this nonsense, beyond this playpen. As Gandhi said, you must be the change you want to see in the world. We are the world. What else has created the world that we are looking at? We have, or we've allowed it to be created on our uh, uh, in our name. There is no path, path to peace. Peace is the path. We've got to stop fighting each other before we divided and ruled into total enslavement. And Martin Luther King said this, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic or popular, but one must take it because it is right. And we are there now. You know, when someone said to me, what would change the world quicker than anyone else? I would say this, or anything else, it would change overnight if we did this, because everything would come from it. If we stopped making decisions about our actions based on what is right for us in the moment and started doing what we knew to be right by conscience and justice, this world would transform. This world has been created as we experience it by billions of people deciding every day, what do I do in the interests of me? Once we start saying, what do I do in the interests of justice, fairness, and my own conscience, actions change, the world changes. And we are in control of that. And we are, uh, we, we are at a fork in the road now, because Big Brother's on a motorbike now. This is not the totalitarian tiptoe anymore, this is the totalitarian sprint, and we have one last chance to, to open our eyes, open our minds, 
and start getting involved in doing something about this. Because you know, there's gonna come a time, and it ain't too long from now, when we're gonna have to look our children in the face, in the eyes, and we're gonna have to answer the question without blinking and without averting them. What were you doing, daddy, mommy, granddad, grandma, when the fascist state came in that now controls every facet of our lives, including our thoughts? What were you doing when it came in? Now, for what all my ills and all the rest of it, I won't have to blink. How many other people will be trying to look the other way? We have a chance now, still, not to be in that position. Because I'm 56, what have I got left? 10 years, 20 years, a bit longer maybe? The young people today, the kids today, the grandkids today, they're gonna have to live their entire life in what these mad men want to introduce are in the process of doing so, so fast. We owe it to them, if not to ourselves. Not to leave them the design that these people have been working towards for so long. We need to get involved. And if we do, in a united way, the power they're using to enslave us will be gone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Response from command. Or from party leader Greedy. Stand down! Stand down! 